All right, and we get this uh, set up here. Change the URL on the chat box. I didn't take. Oops. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to try to pick up where I left off on Friday. Oh, can you guys hear me? Do I have that microphone on? I better make sure that's all working. And I wanted to get my headphones out too. Yeah, it should be working. Snag on the back. I was playing with cables earlier to set up another Wi Fi router downstairs in our house. That's uh, actually to separate some of the uh, connections because we had so many TVs and everything going that, uh, yeah, I think there was a lot of devices on the one router, even though the router is a pretty heavy duty router. Has three radios in it and everything, but still. Make sure I got sound. I was have to turn this way up because I have headphones. So, okay. So, I, uh, some of the, uh, oh man, how should I even say? But, like, when I got off work Friday, I was like, oh, this freaking job, right? Is uh, just another place where the builders, you just want to find the builder and just punch him in the throat, just throat punch. Because, there's no way this stuff should just be continuing to happen. And those of you that followed me for like over 10 years or remember me from over at HVAC Talk, uh, and I really need to get back on there a little bit sometimes, just chime in on there too. But, uh, you know, I've been showing pictures and videos once we really got into the video aspect of just what it's like here in Maricopa County, the basic main desert area of Arizona. It just blows people away that um, they could do new construction, all sorts of stuff that they supposedly pull permits on and just totally just jackass the design, make it unsafe, make it so you can't access anything, and it's just crazy. I mean, when I first moved down here, I went from a mixture of everything, work from working on, you know, um, walk-in coolers to regular residential to some, you know, gas equipment in restaurants to where I just did a little, mostly residential for a year or two, three years when I first came down here, and got a crash course on that, and it was just insane. And, I put the pictures up on HVAC talk and people just be blown away. Go, how is that even past code? Like you're you're moving like stuff and you're going through a pole this big in a shoe closet and then you're like crawling on trusses with no catwalk, you know, and you get up to furnaces that are just totally not very accessible. It's, they're just people just blown away or all the units on the roof on residential. They were like, what the heck? They just don't see that. It's like parts of Florida, you know, I guess um, Las Vegas area is just like here. Just a couple places like that, but most of the other countries, it's like all they ever see is just like in the commercials when they try to lure you in HVAC, they just show somebody standing at a vertical furnace in, in coil in a closet or in a basement or something and all the duct work you get to and everything. Uh, up in Payson area, you know, we had a lot of under the house um, duct work and, you know, furnaces laying horizontal under there and stuff. But they, uh, unless you did it off the record, you know, they they, they checked your, uh, your work. You got a permit, they checked it. You had to pass. You know what? They'd measure that hole to get to the, if you were up in the attic or wherever the access was, the hole to get underneath. You had to have 30 inches in front of anything with high voltage, like the National Electric Code states, which is nationwide. But then I came down to the desert. Friends up there were like, dude, try to just scare me with stuff down here. But man, the, 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 the construction side of it, just what they get away with down here, it's just abysmal. And it's crazy because air conditioning is such a hot, item in the desert in Arizona, and yet it's just so wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, as if you're just, let's just throw it in and then install it, and it's not accessible, and it's unsafe, and just as if you just never have to service it, and it's like, that couldn't be further from the truth. So I've been doing strictly commercial since like 2005, with just a dabbled bit of residential in there sometimes, and the commercial side, I mean, it's just... This, they're building like crazy right now, but the stuff is almost getting worse. I'm going into hotels where they're putting units in and then sheetrocking over them. They're, they're putting units in where the, the front of the access is like 
for the where the blower and where the controls are, like an air handler or fur, you know, air handler. They use air handlers more than furnaces. Uh, they're like this far from a wall. They put them in a soffit that's just big enough to fit the air handler up in there. They don't leave you any room to get in front of the air handler to service it. And it's like, and they're passing it, and it's getting done, and the place is opening, and then you're getting called out. Hey, we're having issues with this. It's never worked right. And it's like, how the f do I even get to it? You know. And when the blower goes, you're like, you're just gonna have to like tear all the the soffit out, and then get a genie lift in there or something, lower it out of there just to get to the blower. That is just so insane. So lately, we've been getting some new buildings that we've been involved in that are just crazy like that. And so this one which is the title of this video, is like 312 heat pumps that you can't even access thanks to, jack thanks to jackass builders. So um, just a fine example of this was on uh, one I did last week. I went to, the, I think I worked on three of them at this place. It's a 19-story, 18 or 19-story apartment high-rise in uh, Phoenix. Uh, it's pretty new. It's, they're all, you know, they've been trying to market this place. It's pretty expensive to rent there and everything, but... The developers are just pieces of junk, evidently, just a joke. Um, the people, you know, the install, installation people and stuff, you know, the, the units, it's not their fault. They're just, they look on plan, they put it up, it's all concrete at the time, and then it just, by the time all the trades get in there and the sheetrock goes up, they sheetrocking around these units, and then they give you a little inspection panel, which you're going to see in the video on two or three of the units I worked on the other day. I've been working on two or three of these units a week, but uh, this one was a vaulted ceiling apart corner apartment so we actually had to cut a hole through the side of the sheetrock in the living room just to get to the drain i'll show you that you could never ever going to get to the blower compartment so far every one of these heat pumps 312 of them um, you're never going to get to the blower without just demolitioning ceilings out of the way and, and metal uh, studs and everything and moving electrical whatever it takes and we're going to drop in water source heat pumps so let's watch this video mike chime in um I was starting to say this. I meant to do this Friday when I came home hot on this piece of junk call, and uh, that steam didn't work. So now I've kind of have to like kind of watch it with you guys and kind of just remember different aspects of it. And then uh, as you guys ask me questions, I'll pause and stuff, and we'll just kind of go over it. And as you guys just give me your input, man, just need a vent on this. But I seriously, I mean, somebody. I know everybody's like, you know, your work probably doesn't like you getting involved and stuff with it but somebody just needs to take the city you know the task which who needs to take the builders to task and needs to take the corrupt freaking inspectors to task because i don't understand it's either they're incompetent inspectors or they're taking bribes it's one or the other i mean this shit just needs to stop it's just crazy and then it puts us as technicians hard place especially if our company had anything to do with putting it in which it wasn't their fault but they're like doing it for the builders doing it for the developer who who should have freaking just, the prints should have been just failed, you know, before it left paper. It should have been redesigned. But they're doing this to all these sorts of places, man. Just crazy. So uh, check the comment before I start it. You think, yeah, you think they'd be more strict here, right? Being as far, as bad as it is, you know? But no. Seattle, out of Seattle to Idaho. For that reason, Idaho, yeah, my brother moved up there, so he's always trying to tell me how good it is up there. I have several family members that moved up there now. Um, but you know, I'm in Arizona, which is pretty good for some aspects, like, you know, very pro-gun, pro and, you know, we have a lot of good rights here and stuff like that. Idaho, I guess, is not far different. Um, Idaho, the, the I probably like the uh, climate a little better up there. But... Arizona desert is like only the bottom third of the state. That's what the state's known for. But as soon as you get to the middle part of Arizona, you're at like 5,000 foot altitude at Prescott or Payson or everything like that. And if you go even higher or north or east of that, you're at seven, 8,000 foot altitude. It's like being in Colorado. It's a totally different. It's 20 degrees cooler, all pine trees, you know, stuff like that. So, so this video here, it should play. Put the sound on it. I'll show you this. I just put some clips together of what I had to do. This is just absolutely ridiculous. And um, I basically um, have cut a couple holes. I a couple holes. I've been cutting holes at this place because they only give you an inspection panel where the one panel comes off to, to check the codes and check maybe get your gauges on. It's even hard to do that because there's only one panel is accessible there. 
Anyway, uh, but uh, this was a little more than that. And in the, in the, in the maintenance guys on site, there's like three of them. They're wanting me to do like everything like that. And I said, no, I'm not cutting the holes in this, pers this person's living room. And by the way, these people are all just moving in as they keep finding out all these problems with drains because uh, the drain pipes are being pushed up during construction and everything. Can't get to it until I cut holes. So I made them cut these holes. You see, yeah, you see them all over Arizona's a desert, huh? Yeah, it's only the bottom third. Only the bottom third is desert. It's uh, like Colorado with, within 90 minute drive. Uh, some places even closer than that. Crown King, um, well, Crown King, 90 minutes or so because it's just a rough road to get there but as a bird flies it's like 40 miles or something north of north phoenix and it's like 5500 square uh or 5500 foot altitude or something like that you know of course there's like three ski resorts in arizona so stuff like that the main two i think is a uh, snowflake and uh like snowball or whatever area up in flag play flag <laughs> let me play this video here Okay, so uh, is the, was the audio working for all, for all that? Video cuts off all audio. You guys not hearing the audio from my video? Let me... Uh... Oh, it was muted. All right. <laughs> Good thing I stopped at the ask. But I'll just go ahead and say before I start it again that um, this is how only some of the, the apartments are. This is a vaulted area, and what it is is because the... It's vaulted out here in the main air living area, and then this is going around through the bedroom and into the bathroom and then through the closet where it's not vaulted, so they have a drop-down ceiling area to put this access, but this unit is way up high. So before they framed all this, our guys just stick this up there and hang it there, about how it's shown on paper, you know, and then people come in and run the drain, run the electrical. A lot of these uh, pipes, as they've been going over the wall, over the stud, I've been seeing other vendors, like, tuck their stuff up and over. They push the pipe up to get their stuff over some of these walls. That's caused some of the problem. But uh, you hear me, of course, now, I'm sure. But I saw that the audio, or desktop audio, was muted. So I'll unmute that, and we'll start it over. But uh, most of the apartments I've been in, it's just like when you when you open the cover, which you'll see on the other run, you'll see it later. It's not a big open area like that, which I couldn't get up in there because i just fall on the sheetrock. It's just real thin steel framing up there. But... Um, most of them are just like oh, there, you know, and it's a very small soffit that's that's right around the units. So I'll play this again with the sound, and then I'll come back and check. Check this out. Up the eight foot ladder, because you can't get anything taller into the closet. And then you have to open this. Go up in this soffited area. There's our water source heat pump. Wide screen here. And blower over there you're never going to get it out without demoing this and bringing the unit down drain is connected in this side so we're probably gonna have to go into the vaulted area of this apartment and cut holes over there to get to that side of the unit now looks like the drain line also kicks up when it goes that way so this keeps going off on drain fault i already jacked this up like two inches on this side just to tilt the shite out of it going that way you can see the drain lines below the unit now, but it looks like I probably need to lift it up over there. I just need to lift this unit up a lot. But I'm already way up here. And nothing really to stand on up here. This sheetrock and steel framing and 
I don't know, one of these days, just need to hold a fire to these freaking builders, because these are jackasses. These are losers who suck and fail in California. Come to Maricopa County in Arizona, and new construction is not inspected, or they pay off the inspectors or something. I've seen this for over 20 years now in this area. Brand new buildings just keep going up, same bullshit. Time and time again, hotels, high-rise apartments like this, whatever. Doesn't matter, incompetence. Somebody needs to put a stop to this shit. The other thing that sucks about these water source heat pumps up here in the soffited area where you can never get to them. There's your air filters, by the way, but the blower access panel is over there where I can't get to it. And the shitty thing on these climate master units and units like that, if you have a condensate issue, like this one's tripping on condensate alarm for the sensor, um, what it usually would pull the cover off of the blower cover over there and I could look in there and see if there's water standing in the pan. I can never do that on these at this whole job. There's like hundreds of these units at this job in downtown Phoenix. Okay, so yeah, um, in this one, most of them, like I said, uh, it just got softened around the whole thing so you can't get the blower cover off. This one, there's no room to get the blower either because it's just, I can't reach it. It's way over there. I'm standing way up on top of an eight-foot ladder just to do this part of the video uh, right here and to reach this unit where I can reset it. But this is over a vaulted section of the uh, kitchen, and this is their living room. You'll see later. I think I get like a, some video over there. It's just, there's just no way. You're never going to get to the blower. This unit's, this whole soffit underneath me is going to have to be demoed. You know, probably gonna have to cut holes over here, or maybe not. Maybe once it's demoed, you get a bunch of ladders in here. You can crank the unit over and detach the duct. It's gonna be a nightmare. It's gonna be a nightmare. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Either that, or you're gonna go up through cut holes through here and, and rip all this stuff out of the way and get the blower cover off to get the blower out. I mean, once these blowers start going, it's just gonna be a mess. Just absolutely crazy and absolutely disgusting that people just see this and there's like, you know inspectors down on the road going, looks good from here, looks good from here, where's my check? Somebody's got to be paying them off, because I can't believe that every inspector is this incompetent, but it's just crazy, man. Just, our hands are like tied behind our back to try to even service these piece of shits. And, uh, you know, the maintenance get all frustrated and stuff because, you know, the people are moving in and these units don't work. And then, uh, but it's like, what am I, what can I do? It's like, I, I can't even service these things. Then we got the monsoon weather, and then right there's the outside air intake. I can't even get over there to reach it. I mean, again, contractor on these jobs, starting with the architecture, which should have been rejected off before it left paper, and then everybody else involved. This should have been rejected. Just they need to be shamed for this shit, or they're never going to stop doing this. I mean, I can't. The blower is literally over there. You can never get to it. You'd have to demolition all this softened area out to lower the heat pump out of here just to work on the blower. That's ridiculous. The condensate drain, same thing, it's over there. How do you ever fucking get to it? So now, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to figure out how to cut holes above these people's TV on the wall, you know, to get me some holes for the sheetrock. You know, and they're wanting me to cut the holes. And I'm like, dude, this is way over and beyond me coming to work to do HVAC repair. I ain't making me make the holes. I think the maintenance people should make those holes. I mean, that's ridiculous. Expect uh, me to do it and take liability for whatever happens. Fuck that. Cut the hole, give me access, then I'll jack this unit up. This shouldn't be like this in the first place. All right. Didn't have my finger ready on the button. But, uh, so here's out my living room, guys. And I had this other guy come out here and cut holes. So, uh, <laughs> they they brought this is maintenance guys. This is out in the living room. This is vaulted, so the height of where I'm standing through is about right here, and then that unit was way up here. It's on the other side of this. So we got it. He's cutting me holes just so I can reach in there to the all thread and jack the unit up, get the drain below the unit, stuff like that. So absolutely crazy. There's my access to the hole. There's the uh, where they expect you to work on the unit through that hole in the. Uh, closet there get you to the one end of the water source heat pump can't get to the blower blowers over there still can't get to it it's up against that wall you know will have to be removed for that of course you have to demo out all this ceiling in the closet for that to lower this unit i don't know how you get to the ductwork connections over here but 
right now I'm raising up this thread. These bolts were over the ceiling, but I got a ratchet strap over there pulling the unit that way. They cut me a hole right here, so trying to make sure this pipe is pitched down. So I've raised the unit like over two inches now. You can see the, when they put the wall in after the fact, it lifted up on that pipe right there. Yep. Still got to get that up. Lifted this unit way up in the air. You definitely see the condensate pipe right there. Definitely is below the unit. Should be good. That was the low spot before. Unit hasn't kicked off. This unit was kicking off within a few minutes because of all the humidity. Right there, there's a fresh air duct from the outside air. Our uh, humidity was over 50% by quite a bit. It was like the dew point was 68 degrees today. Pretty insane amount of humidity for our area. So I couldn't get out of this apartment complex until they gave me another one. Okay, so... Uh... Here's another one, and this is what a lot of them are like. There's a couple, some variety, so this is another one. But this is like the typical completely softened in area that I see a lot. You'll see clearly when I point up in here that there's obviously never going to be any way to access a blower or anything. At this point, I just need to access the drain. All these people that are just moving in, and it got it's in the summer. <laughs> Finding out all these apartments, people like push the drains up or whatever, or you know when they built the soffits and everything, the units might not have been high enough, whatever. And so I'm gonna have to fix a bunch of them. And uh, so I'm gonna have to cut holes. So I cut hold. This one's more typical of what I've been doing to Put cut holes. a different funny floor plan setup. So here's the access to a barrel source heat pump. Oh look at this. Think any of this shit puts your passcode. There's the unit in there. And flash will work on widescreen. No filter. Somebody better get that back in there. Here's the unit. Guess where the fan blower is? The other side, facing the wall. This will be another one. Pretty much every water source heat pump in this complex that has hundreds of them, when they need us to change the blower motor, they're going to have to demo this whole ceiling out, depending where it is. And then, so we can lower the unit. This is just beyond bullshit. Blinking LED means there's a fault. These are almost all been fault code six for condensate. One, three, six, condensate. Where's the condensate? <laughs> Looks like somebody's piss bottle up there. Condensate pipe back there. No access. This is getting to be bullshit. I'm gonna just reach my limits with the contractor who did this. This need, they need to be shamed for, <laughs> it ain't the people's fault for putting the units in, it's people's fault for designing the building and sheetrocking soffits and ceilings underneath them. For fuck's sake, this would not pass code in any legit county. Maricopa County needs to get their freaking necks run for this shit. This is just absolutely fucking bullshit. I'm getting tired of doing this in every single one of these apartments almost. To, to work and we haven't gotten to where we have a component failure like a blower or something or compressor yet you know how are you gonna how are you gonna fix it <sighs> to cut a hole <laughs> <laughs> all right stop here go to the comments a little bit so uh a couple comments um julio says well that sucks but this is what the hvc is i think that's what he's starting to say when he cut himself off well um no, I mean, to, that's a whole problem to code. I mean, you don't install a unit that you can't service. I can get access to one panel. So I can access the controls on all of them pretty much. That one was tall, though, with the vaulted, but most of them are like this where I can kind of get up there, my head up there, and that's the only thing they gave you access to is the one panel where the controls are. I changed a TXV on one, on one of these small ones the other day. Um, got it done. 
Uh, luckily, actually, the new part was the same, and I just took the power head off when I saw that it was. Yeah, and the reason it sounds like a flasher there, Joe, is because um, these units, um, let's go to the board. It has a relay he right here. I think this is it. And see these two terminals right here? That's uh, alarm terminals. So it's for installing some sort of external alarm system or something that would count the pole. You know it's an alarm or something and then it flashes. I think it so when I put it in test mode um, it'll report the code and at the same time you hear the relay click with the light so it's going to click 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 you know six times is default. Yep and then uh, Josh asked if this was the place of the Ecobee and yeah that is a big yes. That's why even though there was enough wires for it. Let's go back to where you can see up in there. Oh, right, there's a good picture. Here's the EcoB. Um, it's like a power stealer kit, but they call it a power extender kit. And basically, it splits the power. You know, it takes a wire and this does DC through it, so it can control two things with one wire. So if you don't have enough wires for a common, and you have to have a common for an EcoB, there's no batteries or anything. So yeah, so their fix was to install these, and it kind of got rid of most of that clicking weird issue between the EcoB and the uh, Taco brand. Um, water valve actuators that have the supercapacitors being charged charges off your 24 volts and it's huge current spikes on the so the sine wave for your 24 volts I looked at it my scope which you see in another video it's like it just pull, all sorts of distortion and just pull you know crazy spikes on it so the ego be a wig but if we put this on here it kind of buffers it or whatever kind of I don't know kind of solved it for the most part Still not exactly right, but I haven't been getting all the calls where it used to like erratically th throw off the microprocessor in this board and where this would do weird things. So we're good there. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's no way you're ever going to get to the uh, the blower. The blower is over there, up where that framing is and everything over there and, you know, in part, another part of the apartment. So we're never getting to the blower. We either have to cut a hole and then probably takes tin snips to some of the st to this metal studs from over here to get to the blower, or we're going to have to drop the whole unit, which is going to be a nightmare. But in, by golly, you know, when, when it comes to that, I'm going to say, call me back when there's no soffit. And you know what? When, when somebody has to start doing this on the jobs and then calling us back, maybe they'll freaking get on the horn with these freaking developers and just kick their ass because this is just bullshit. So it's... I'm sure the X13 will never fail. <laughs> That's what's in there. Yep. So uh, let me go back to this. You guys will see what I do to get to the drains. After cutting a hole, <laughs> there goes the pipe. <laughs> yeah, goes uphill a little bit into the the metal there. So um, at this point, I'm not standing through the access hole, you know, where the controls are. I'm actually on the other side of it. I cut a hole in the sheetrock. So now you're seeing me on the other side of the unit, other side of the long end of the unit. This is the drain. This is what I find, the pipe going up through a hole and then back down. It's too high, and then the water just holds water. And then see this how it goes down here? This is one of the floor plans where they, they take it to the uh, washer and dryer drain. Which kind of works, I guess. It's probably the best spot to actually have them in there because they're tying into the sink. The bathroom sink is a pretty good spot that they tie them into, but it'll, it'll clog there sometimes. But they've tied them into the kitchen sink on a couple of them, including that one that I just did before where we're at the vaulted area. And so all the nasty stuff from the garbage disposal and from the uh, dishwasher that pump into that trap, the rubber hose for these things where this connects the drain is right there. It just fills up with the shite. I mean, I did one and it looked like turds were coming out of it. It does look like CPVC, does it? Because of the yellow stripe. And I'm trying to remember, I think this place might be CPVC, which sucks because I have PVC on my truck when I do have some and it doesn't fit. So, but really, I've hardly ever had to cut this pipe. It's all been just leveling it and jacking the unit up. And this unit, I had like an inch and a half. I was able to lift it. And I think that's all it took. So we'll check it out. Where the hole is in the stud. Everybody thinks that the how level the pipe is has to match the pre-cut holes in the studs rather than going downhill. So look at this, the bottom of the unit, higher than right there. So they got the pipe pulled up, so I'm gonna jack this unit up to the ceiling. All right, I wish I could use the light when I'm doing wide view mode, but it won't. Samsung and their wisdom 
disables that, but I got this unit jacked up to the ceiling in here on this side. You can see how high up I went. Yep. All the way up. Guess that was the end of my video. So, yeah, that's it, man. Crazy, huh? And all my raw stuff here, just crazy. Um, oh, I went up to look at their fresh air, makeup air units that they have on the roof. You think they've been changing filters, the crew that they have there? Yeah. <laughs> Those filters are dirty, man. And they have a... Uh, those two inchers, and then it goes to the four inchers after that. And look at this, December 17th, 2019. I think they might get a little better air through these if they change those freaking filters. Um, I think the other unit looked the same. Yeah, they're, these filters are just gone, man. Oops. They're just caving in. It's crazy, huh? So I, I made a couple video clips of it. Looking inside there. I'm going over to the smaller unit now. No alarms on the Aeon units. These are Aeon units on the roof. They're doing good now. I think I changed the program of what the supplier was. But the, dude, these guys are testing them, man. Look at those air filters, man. <laughs> they are totally just devastated. Yep. And then this company, these two chicks, man, come in here. Pretty cute. I remember at the time. And they, they just sold them on this stuff, I think, right when this uh, convid, as people call it, pandemic started. And, uh, yeah, they're going to shoot this stuff in there. And then all it is a rubber hose that they have tucked in. Oh, I don't think I show it. It's kind of just tucked in. They just pulled the filter back and shoved it right there. Just spray right at one corner of the freaking coil, man. Gimmick. I wonder how much money they're paying for this. There's that little jug, and there's some sort of pump machine. There it is. They just have this rubber hose, this tube, just shoved right here. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep, and that's where it plugs in. They even have the cover down on there. Um, and I know this is still... Yeah, this is one of my best views, man. I like this building for uh, when you go up on the roof. It's uh, just the city. Check comment real quick. Do you have to clean up the mess from the sheetrock? No, and that's one reason I just had nothing to do with demoing that uh, hole that they, you know, to get to that unit of that vaulted ceiling area. And they were trying to want me to do it. I'm like, dude, you, they're like maintenance guys. Come on, man. You know, take bring an HVAC guy in there to work on your unit and have to have him like demoing sheetrock and all that stuff. So he put up all that. He did that, and sure enough, the Ladies like, we just moved in and we have to deal with all this. And it was getting dust everywhere. And then they told her, yeah, we'll have our, you know, our housekeepers come up and clean it all. So it kept me separate from all that. It worked out real well that because I've been cutting the smaller holes with my knife and stuff. But he was just bashing the crap out to get that one stuff out of there. And uh, it made a mess. And then it was everywhere. So um, regular little messes. Of course, you know, we... we on normal things we do, but on that. But we made the deal in this place a while back that, hey, when we get to the drains on here, because we didn't agree with what they did and everything, and it's just ridiculous, you know, we'll cut a hole, just a quick hole, but we're not going to fix it. So you, they can patch it, or they'll come in and put a second access panel. Some of them don't look bad putting a second panel, depending on where it is, like if it's in a closet, who cares? But so a lot of these soffits, it's like right in the middle of their living room. <laughs> And they're just patching it, I think. So the next time we go mess with the drain or anything, we'll just have to cut another hole. So, yeah, this is like overlooking. Look at all those units. Looking down at the freeway. So I like this part of the roof. All the, all the cranes, man, going on. Just shows you how much building there is going in Phoenix. Just cranes everywhere. Yeah, they're just building all this is all new construction, man. It's pretty cool. And then uh, I like going to the, to this other spot right here, man. Get one. Look at this. This is the view up here. Flagpole. Swimming pool. There's one girl in there. I don't want to make it awkward. Yeah, they're building up a lot around here. Yeah, so basically, uh, somebody down at the pool I was like, oops. But this is where they go to change their flagpole. 
So I kind of like this spot right here. It's, it scares a lot of people to come up here, but uh, it's right at the edge. But, you know, about 20 floors up at this spot right here. So, yeah, it's pretty cool little spot. I was daring them to walk on this across from one side of the wing to the other. <laughs> you imagine the winds come up and you're on something that's six foot wide. It's plenty wide to walk on, but it would probably scare the hell out of you with all the wind and feel it looking down. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> We got a jumper. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. So that's most of the stuff um, that I was dealing with. I was thinking of something else to show you guys a minute ago, but now I forgot. But I'll probably go ahead and kill the video in a minute. But I'll just kind of show you before I leave. There's some stuff I'm starting to work on. I've still got the uh, um, my unit I, that's cooling. It's cooling me right now. It's um, uh, the three-phase unit. I'm running my house by using a variable frequency drive. Single phase in, and then remember I hooked up a rectifier external to it, just so I'd make sure I don't blow up the one that's rated for three phase input. When you're only using like part part of the diodes, I was just worried that it'd just be overcurrent. You would fry them, and they're on a heat sink in there, and on the circuit board, I didn't want to fry it, so I just rectified the power external, and that's working. I had to put a cooling fan on that, but I I kind of got, and then my solar of course is still connected to the DC, but. It's like the same voltage DC almost, so when the sun comes up and it's got the strongest, um, makes the most power in, in the middle of the day, it's only maybe half, it's only spawning like half the power because the utility power is still connected and the DC power are almost the same. So it only like, when I hook the solar panel, it only drops down like the utility power in half. So the solar is able to run the compressor completely when it's good and then it'll be able to run quite a bit of it still when the sun's kind of, you know, not in peak. So my idea uh, to do next modification is to build like a, a little co electronic control to like drop the DC voltage that's been rectified from the, the utility power. So instead of being 330 volts or so, I want to drop it down to 300, which would be like you'd get on a 208 volt input, which is fine for the VFD and compressor. Maybe even drop it down a little more, 295. I might even put like a photo wire or something and then like make it be a little higher at night and then drop down when it'll, when it's got the photo eye, you know, pretty much know when the sun is up and good, then it'll, I want it to drop the utility voltage, the converted DC down, so it'll favor, it'll pull most of the current off the solar. And so here's a heat sink I've had, I've, been, I've used for experiments or whatever. And I've machined this because I've had MOSFETs screwed in here. Uh, what I do with it, man. I put a little MOSFET here. It was probably laying on here and I probably just dropped it. Oh, here it is. So this is how big a MOSFET is. I had four of them on here just because I was doing experiments with DC power there. So I ordered these MOSFETs. So there's two of them here and you can see the size difference. Oops, it's hard to do this on the camera. It's like these things are huge compared to like one of these. You know, it's like you know, it's like nothing. So this is like the surface area on these is huge. And these these are good for, uh, I think two of these in parallel will handle all the current. And those IGBTs, basically, that they use for like, you know, uh, electronic drives, whatever, it's basically to make three-phase. They're just basically six of these. Oh, and the end just shot out. I don't want to blow them up. But, uh, yeah, here's a size difference, though. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But the idea is... Um, Put two of these in there. These little rubber plugs are coming off now. The jack shaking it. But uh, those are going to go on this heat sink right here that I already had from some other project. We got some uh, insulators and stuff. Those are some big insulators compared to the ones I have for the uh, the normal size. You know, the TO two twenty size or whatever. I think this is an optical. Isolator with a with a MOSFET driver built in, you know, switch so all that'll buffer in between the circuits, the microprocessor, and that. And there's some other stuff, some diodes, and other little electronics I needed for the project. I got a good handful of stuff from DigiKey, you know, the MOSFETs and other things to build. But now I need like a bigger project box because that one I put on the side is too small. 
I've been a little, uh, look at Bob, electronics I was into originally, like as a hobby. I actually went to one year, the associates or whatever, the EE degree or whatever. It was like a two-year class, crammed into one, real long nights, and then, like 1990. And then I kind of chased the X around and never did anything. And then went up later after all that, you know, and I was a single father, I went up falling into HVAC. And I didn't go to school for HVAC. But electronics, obviously... Being at my hobby, I was already a car mechanic, all that kind of stuff before. I made it pretty easy to go to HVAC. So it was like pretty easy career because of that stuff. And I was that's what I was into at 13, 14, 15 years old. You know, we didn't have like, I didn't have cable TV at my house. We had like an antenna to booster and we lived way out in the boonies. So we didn't have any of that stuff. <laughs> so I took things apart <laughs> all the time. I still do, you know. I just can't obsess on something, you know. <laughs> I bounce around with all my hobbies now. So, uh, yeah, uh, notice you were using, but yeah, the, so the programming for, they call it Pick Basic Pro. So, yeah, it's basically basic. So it's, uh, and then there's, you could do assembly code in it when you need it to do something very a specific order or something. And that stuff will make you pull your hair out because you're actually giving it one line of code to say, really move one bit into one port you know, into or into one reg register, you know, uh, memory or whatever. Your 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 one each line of code is specifically doing it. It might take five six lines of code or more to do what just one commanded basic does. But if you do it in assembler, it does it exactly the order you wrote it. And that's it. So sometimes, they, and it's usually just those interrupt routines. If you ever use something like that, you want to do it that way, like looking for rollover flags or interrupt flags or. Interrupt input pin stop save your it saves it goes over to does a command you know which could be just going oop increment this register by one <laughs> you know and then it's like remove this 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 value over to this other one or something or into this uh, you know um, what do you call it the uh, variable or something and then you go but and it exits goes back to where it was in the program and it could be doing that thousands of times a second <laughs> you're writing that code but almost all of it is that um, no I've never learned C but I know when you look at the other stuff you could kind of just look at it and usually figure out kind of what the what the lines are you know and stuff just like if you look at HTML but I just I wouldn't know how to just go there and just do it and there's been other kinds of a uh, microprocessor programs that's more in that other stuff also I forget what it was and it was in it's and it's kind of weird how it breaks down and you kind of indent it and it's kind of different levels and stuff of hierarchy I guess of the of the program I never really used it much because somebody had all the stuff for pick basic pro and they hooked me up with it when I went when I got into it and I know people now use uh, Adreno or whatever a lot now but it's like the original stuff. I was starting to get into like those parallax chips a long time ago. But those chips are like thirty bucks for like one. And then, but it did have it all pre-set up, pretty simple, and it had like a debugging, so you could see it like when it was running and everything with the software they give you. And it's a lot harder to do that with the microchips. But the microchips, you know, I mean, some of those chips are under a dollar each, and the ones I'm using are like two dollars each when I only buy a couple at a time. Like in here, I just bought two more of them, and it was like. 210 or something each. If you buy them in bulk, it's a lot cheaper. But still, I mean, that's two dollars for a whole chip. If I blow it up or something, it's not that big of a deal. But it's the rudimentary basics of a circuit. It doesn't have anything else on it. But there's quite a bit of stuff that could do in there. You know, depending on what model you get with a bunch of timers or analog or digital in converters. You know, which is cool. You could read a zero to five volt input. You know, to a 16 bit um, value. I usually just run them. Convert them down to eight or something. <laughs> so it's a lot zero to two fifty five is a lot easier to deal with as a number than zero to sixty four thousand whatever sixty five thousand whatever that comes out to be. It's like I don't need that many steps for what I do with these things. That resolution is way too much. So um, yeah, yeah. So picks are real simple. Um, you can find. Uh, just go and find, uh, go to uh, forums and stuff, and people help you with some of the code if you get stuck. Sometimes some of the stuff just makes you pull your hair out and you're stuck. Sometimes you just find out it's just a, something that chip just can't do if you used it for this part. This other part won't work. You didn't realize it. It's weird because sometimes I have no explanation, but like an input just won't work, even though it says it will. But it could be because, I don't know, because this part of the register is being used in there for something else, and then it just doesn't. I'll just go to a different pin and reassign it and move my solder connection to that and it works you know for buttons 
So um, I have a couple different ideas to do it. I was just going to use straight up. I'm going to here's the thing. I'm going to try to. Um, I already experimented on it with a regular size MOSFET and using 24 volt transformer to lower the scale of the voltage in my shop, my hobby room, and it works. I'm just basically uh, taking the 24 volt sine wave and then I full wave rectify it. So it's you know you got your normal up and down you know unfiltered with the cap, right? I'm trying to I'm going to try to like mess with it before. I filter it before it gets to filter DC. I want to like pulse width modu modulate the actual up and down, you know, rectified, fully rectified AC input and try to get it to like, uh, if I slow it down, it'll actually use more of uh, an average of that sine wave, not all the way down at the zero crossing, but, but further of it. And I think I might get a little better reading or power factor, maybe whatever you want to call it, you know, on my thing. I'm going to experiment with it. So, the other idea I was thinking of doing is just using a triac input to basically when that voltage or something like that, when it got up to a certain preset voltage, it would um, the triac would bias or whatever, and then uh, but maybe just make it actually back feed into the chip or something. You know, I might not need a triac for that, just some sort of electronic control. But basically, just had to reach a certain threshold, you know, and it just basically will shut off my MOSFET. And that way, and I can adjust it, and it'll just and until I get like 295 to 300 volts when it's being reduced. But I might do it with just some feedback or whatever, just to regulate it like 300 volts or something, or right under that, like I said, at night or, or I mean, during the day. So it's really just mostly running on the DC power. But I want this thing to like instantly have power to tap off the utility if the clouds go over the thing or whatever happens with the solar. I don't want to use switching transfer switches or anything like that. I just want to go, poop, you know, and or not. I mean, it's just literally or just have the power always there like it does now. It's just that it's not utilizing all of the solar potential that I installed. It's, so, um, and then, I don't know, another idea later on, we, I still want, might want, if I get a chance, maybe put a mini split in my garage or something and put up some panels for it. It'd be, and I would run that one totally off of, or almost totally off of the solar. And I mean, that'd be the only time that unit could run, probably. That's probably how I'll do it. And that way, uh, it'll just let it cool the garage when uh, the sun can do it. And if my dad moves in here, I might have to give up that hobby room of mine. So I definitely need to put a mini split in, just a one ton, probably, and just blow it right in, right at my workbench. And even though the garage might be hot, as long as the mini split's blowing on you, you're, it'll be plenty cool, I think. And if it ran a couple hours in there, I think that garage would be cool even if it is totally insulated. So anyway, see some of the other guys chiming in now. You guys are getting in here right towards the end of the stream again. So let's see. A-Team Adam. And my uh, buddy Rob, his uh, electrical sparky company is called uh, Arthur's A-Team Electric. And uh, I forget what the, I forgot what the, the motto is, but you know, it's obviously a takeoff of the show A-Team that we liked. So that was funny. So he's like, uh, something about, don't call the B team or something or what it is. I'm gonna screw it up. But he has some sort of sort of sort of motto that's funny as heck. So he doesn't like it when I call call it Sparky. It's like very offensive to electricians. What do you want, child? So I ask you when we're gonna go shooting again. When are we gonna go shooting again? Why? Because my friend wants to go. Because your friend wants to go. Well, I just used my daughter's asking about taking a shooting because her friend wants to go sometime. Well, here's the thing. I heard that ammo was clearing the shelves, but I hadn't looked. And we just went out to the desert Saturday, <laughs> did some shooting. Maybe I'll get up some pics for you guys. And um, my uh, then I went to Cabela's later to look, and there was like, wow, there's like no ammo on the shelves. So that sucks. <laughs> oh, it's getting weird. Going through my drive here, show you guys some photos or whatever. And I like my one friend's uh, scope here, the Burris. I was looking at it at Cabela's, and actually they have one that was called uh, something else. It was like twice the price of this one, but it has like not only had the awesome like optics through it, it had like a different colored laser holographic ones that uh, so it work good at night. So I want to I want to get one of those. And because I'm on my AR-15, this is a bullpup, but on my AR-15, um, 
I mean, decisive like I am with everything. I have the metal side. I go, oh, let's just go back to the metal side. It's a flat top, so I put it one that you that's detachable to add on to it. Because sometimes it's cool having the metal side for just plinking around. But then, you know, I bought this cheap holographic, and it's cool kind of, but it's not really that good. And then I got a, a, a scope, which is what I got first with it. But the scope's only so good, and the scope's useless for when I'm not looking long, far away. So I'm like, this this kind of scopes, man, you actually get this pretty decent distance. We're shooting way up on the hill with it. I was like, that ain't bad. And then uh, it was usable, you know, in closer proximity. So who knows? I mean, you never know what's going on in the world nowadays. So I've, it's another thing I've slacked with my gun, my AR-15. And, was, and I was out there telling the guys that ever since I lubed it with, like, axle grease <laughs> like my friend told me to um i shot it for years steel cartridges everything no problem and i jinxed it and it kind of like was joke and it froze up or not froze up but it kind of like jammed up a little bit but also the stupid tear that takedown pin came out and lost it as soon as i got there so i hardly shot my gun when we went out but so it's gonna get cleaned i got the uh takedown pin kit fix that so uh Hard to get nine millers. I can feel already sense per. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so I shot more of the twenty-two long rifle than anything when I was out there. I shot my nine a little bit. I gave a box of my nine to my friend, the Sparky friend, actually. He said, "I said, yes, give me a box." Well, <laughs> where? <laughs> so I took the one that I keep in my personal truck and handed it to him. So uh, that's gone. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, we had a. We had a few gats out here in the desert. Yeah, a friend he had this bullpup. This is pretty cool. It was loud, but it's cool because the, the shells just eject out the front here real slow and they just fall out. It's kind of funny. Yep. There's my AR-15 over there. Uh, I forget whose this one is. My friend Craig, man, he, uh, he has his stuff all decked out. Dude, I've neglected my look. I bought mine like over 10 years ago. Look, it still just has the basic stuff that comes on it. It's a flat top. It has one little piece I added here, and I added a freaking sling and a, and a no, it came with the with the uh, the, the stock. So that's just the way it was. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to show out here, but uh, yeah, our stuff's out there. Um, yeah, so. I had binoculars. I'm like, too bad I have binoculars. I go, binoculars? I got binoculars, man. What are you guys thinking? You got to carry that. You got a truck. You better keep that stuff in there, man. So um, I heard that the 20 was even going up again. Look at this. $39.99 I paid for that for like 500 or 525 I have this gun. I have the rifles and stuff. But see this gun right here? This gun is sweet. This is a Walther P22. It has a hammer on it. It's the same size as like a... 380 or a small nine millimeter. In fact, my friend had a small little nine millimeter there and we held it up next to each other. And of course it has the slide lock back. So the back of it's really right here, but it was like the same size. So it only holds 10. That's only in sucks, but it was shoots these cheap rounds just fine. It hardly ever jams. So it's a Walther P22. I got a little laser thing, but it was dead, but a hammer it actually has a real hammer on it and everything. It's cool. It's fun to shoot. It's not like shooting like a normal, like little stupid Plunker 22. So it's cheap as hell, man. Just grab a handful of the freaking 22s and load them up. I just want to get a lot more magazines for it. But 22s are cool. And when the shit hits the fan, if it does, you know, you can't, you, uh, you know, that's actually a good gun to have, even though you have the AR-15s and all that other stuff. It's like you could put a whole pocket full of 22 ammo in your pocket and walk, you know, like a couple hundred rounds <laughs> and travel with it in the pistol, you know. So... Fun fact, a mower hitting a rock has more power than a 380, according to Mythbusters. That's funny. Mythbusters, they're pretty cool. They're kind of stuff I would do. They're, 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 they're science. I mean, they do, if you watch the show, it's like not completely conclusive or anything, but, you know, always. But with what they do, because it's half their, half their, half their, the show is just them engineering the test gear in the first place. But, yeah. There's photos already put up there. I don't remember. Oh, it was my daughter. She colored her hair. One daughter colored my other daughter's, my young daughter's hair here before I could freaking know what happened. But, yeah, so taking the truck out there in the desert. <laughs> this is a nice shooting spot uh, out in the Arizona desert, man. Right here, backs up to a hill. And I didn't really take pictures of the hill, I don't think. But all fun. So... 
Yeah, just, just double check in here, see if there's anything else I want to show and tell before I leave. But most of it Friday, what I wanted to show was that stupid, just that access man. What do you guys think of that? I mean, that's the theme of this video is, you know, there's hotels. Oh, that's what's going to get you the hotel, man. I don't remember where I put it. But they uh, they have units just totally above the T-Grid. Not T-Grid. They should use T-Grid. It's above. It's just in soffits, but they have no ac one little access. It's off to the side. It's not in front of the air handler. There's not enough room between the front of the air handler and the wall to get up there if you wanted to. So it's just ridiculous. But I just want to know how. Like, somebody needs to go down there and just like... People talk about protests, man. We need to protest the freaking county, man. Whoever's responsible ultimately for allowing this shit to continue. I was already doing HVAC when I come down here in 2001, but I left an area where you pulled a permit and they inspected the damn shit and you had to pass it. And I've seen nothing but just nonsense going on since I moved down here. And it's like nobody gives a shit. People hate it. They hate getting to it. They complain as they're working, but it's like because you work for somebody and they're tied to social this and they're or don't want to make this person mad or offend this person. Nobody says anything and never gets anything done. But I mean, it's it's I don't know. I need to shame their ass or something. It just pisses me off. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I had ready. I've been what I've been trying to just looking through a folder on my other screen, but uh, yep. Oh, yeah, besides the, uh, yeah, I won't show it to you guys, but I took a bunch of pictures of uh, some mysterious characters out on the West Valley by the truck stop. I thought they were derelicts, and uh, but then I saw them going in and out, just buying in and out of the stores and everything by where I was eating my lunch in the parking lot. They were buying stuff, and then coming and going to the hotel. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, looters. So I'm like, there's... Dozens of them, and this was a couple Fridays ago, and I took pictures thinking, what if something's go going on this weekend? That night, there was a protest in Phoenix where they marched or whatever. Now, the difference is they don't hardly ever burn anything or anything here because we all carry guns here, and so and what and you know and they and somebody somebody's going to stand you know protect life and property here. The property I know is a gray area, you know. Um, you can't protect property with lethal force unless there's somebody in that property. Then you can use lethal force. So all you have to do is, if as long as somebody's inside that building and they're trying to burn it down, then you can you can shoot them. I mean, you're still going to go to court and all this stuff. So I'll just say you can shoot them, but you know what I mean. It's it would be a reasonable thing. So Crawley dropped the 144. I did get a, a warning or something that popped up earlier, but now it says the. Uh, it says my bit rate is higher than what it needs, but it does say it's good, and I've dropped 430 frames out of 122,000, so it should be doing okay, but it says I still have my stream bit rate at 15,000, which is my outgoing, not what you guys are getting ingoing, because it's your, your apps and stuff compress it, and YouTube compresses it, but uh, I had it turn up to 20,000 to see if 4K would work, and it's been set like that for several times I've done this, and then last Friday it wouldn't work, and then today I was fiddling as for a start, so I need to turn it down. It says to open the widget. It's saying to use, we recommend to use a stream of 4,500. Ha! I don't know if it'll let me change that on the fly. But let's try like 5,000. Which is a third of what it is. Warning, recordings can't be paused if the recording probably said to this thing is a stream. Whatever that means. But let's see if that, I don't know if that changed anything on the setting. It says stream status, excellent. But I saw a glitch in it earlier, but I didn't pay much attention to it. So hopefully it stays at the same quality there. So, uh, near North Idaho. I have several. My brother's up there, and one of my friends is up there. I think he said, uh, Scott Zill, I think he's north of Boise. And I think my brother's not too far from Boise. So you guys had looting up there. But you guys carry guns and stuff up there, right? I heard that they were very pro-Second Amendment there. Arizona's better but for that, but... Oh, not one broken window. Okay. All right. I misread that. Okay. I'm being They tried looting. We had streets full of hundreds of guys with ARs and shotguns. Yes. Oh, man. I wish I would have been there. Dude, I got booted off of a Twitter. I use like a, a proxy account. It's not my name, but it looks legit that I've been using. And uh, 
I said he was a hero and that he was innocent and it was self-defense. And I put up several of that just on the normal news. I used to use it to react on the news articles. And uh, I got suspended for a, a day and it made me delete them all. And it says I was celebrating acts of violence. So basically the people that use all the social media to schedule their acts of violence, including burning, blocking traffic stuff, is totally free speech. But if you just say, hey, that's violent, you tell call them terrorists or you uh, or you talk commend somebody, you know, even if you they are a militia, because militias are telling this to my tenure ago, militias are legit. But since we don't have them anymore, they they basically, you know, demonized them. But that's what part of the Second Amendment was. It didn't is it just when a, a federal government gives us permission here to have one. And when your your city local police seems to be standing down because somebody told them to stand down apparently i mean i don't know man people are gonna get desperate so none of that's happened around here but the date for what my stream oh uh maybe it's because it saved from two weeks ago a couple times ago maybe i didn't update it it does i don't know if i can change it while it's streaming I did change it at one point, but what is today? Nine, seven. There we go. Refresh it and see if that changes. <laughs> Hopefully it'll save it that way when I end here in a second. But yeah, all this uh, crazy stuff. Um, I'll just tell you some of the channels I kind of watch and stuff on YouTube is like a uh, um, high impact flicks, you know, and I watch my daughter likes watching the amazing Lucas with me. I like Steven Crowder, and I know at least one of you has heard of Steven Crowder, you know. We are change, you know, I started following them a long time ago, but I don't really watch their stuff regularly as much. It just isn't like it's a little more slow and drawn out, so I just, and I'm just, ugh, I'm in a hurry, I'm impatient. That's so, but other than that, they, those guys are real journalists, though. Um, and uh, so, uh, and then a couple other little channels. I was. I watch, you know, I like, I like that a uh, girl on a, oh God, Caitlin Bennett, dude, the liberals hate her. She's the one that carried the air 15 to the outside of the university campus talked about, you know, they should have the right to the girls should have the right for the second amendment, you know, and stuff like that. And she's been hated ever since that. And she's really good looking. So the liberals really hate her. <laughs> so, you know, there's a couple of the people I kind of watch regularly and get my feed from, um, if you don't, if you, anybody uses Twitter, you have to follow James Woods. Yes, the actor James Woods, the real James Woods or whatever it's called. That guy is like totally no, he's like for a Hollywood guy, he's like totally not liberal and all that stuff anymore. Or if he ever, I don't know if he was, but I actually watched an old movie of his with my daughter just for the heck of it. I've been getting 80s movies and finding them and watching them with my 10-year-old just kind of reliving them with her. And I watched one with him and Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox was really young. So, yeah. And uh, I forget what it's called, but it was actually a pretty decent flick. Uh, trying to watch all the old staples, you know, diehards of today. Yeah, the other day I watched Caddyshack with her. <laughs> I mean, and sometimes she likes the movies and sometimes she doesn't. And then, uh, um... And then today I watched Rodney Dangerfield because he was a Caddyshack. I go, hey, let's watch some of his others. And it was, and he was a comedian from the '60s and '70s, but then he did movies in the '80s. We watched that Back to School movie. <laughs> it's kind of a stupid movie, but it is very. It has a lot of funny spots. And there's all these actors that she's now identifying from other stuff, including Cobra Kai that we were watching um, on YouTube Premium. Um, and it has all the same actors, <laughs> dude. I, I have to say, when YouTube kept advertising Cobra Kai down our throats. I was like, I don't want to see this crap trying to just push off junk to me. I didn't even have good fond memories of the show, of the movie to me. I really wasn't a big, big fan of it, but I've watched it I can't, a couple times. But finally, after I had, you know, the YouTube premium a while to, to make the app work like it used to for me um, in my phone, I went ahead and played it one day, and that show was so awesome. <laughs> So I actually liked it. We watched the first two seasons, and then they're like, where's season three? Where's season three? Well, because of this convent crap, that's what somebody calls it on one of the shows I watch. They uh, kind of put on halt, but they actually did record almost the whole, or did record the whole season already. But YouTube actually sold it over to Netflix, and, they, and they've been saying watch for the season one and two to come on Netflix. And after it, they play those for a while to get ready into it, they'll bring out season three. And guess what I just noticed this week? Netflix has season one and season two 
of um, Cobra Kai. Dude, it has original people. And uh, anyway, the only reason I brought that up is because uh, the, the guy that played the kid that, you know, he fights at the end of Karate Kid and he's in Cobra Kai, the, the, the new series. Uh, that same kid actor was in Prodigy Dangerfield. He was also kind of a punk in that, too. It's about the same within a year or two of the Karate Kid probably. So. The Officer Tatum? I'm not sure what you mean there, Lou. And then right next to... Oh, you guys are talking about something down in Arizona. Um, right next to Washington. It's crazy. There's 30 minutes away. Spokane, Washington. Was oh, you're talking about Washington State. Dude, uh, freaking... Uh, Oregon, um, Portland, man, what a joke that is. <laughs> We're probably getting way too much into politics on this channel here, but anyway, that does pretty neat. But I gotta get downstairs and check on my family and stuff. I told this to give me a little bit of time so I could finally try the stream out. So it seems to be working flawlessly right now, according to all the software. Is the, is the picture still clear? Of course, there's not much moving around right now. But uh, I turned the bit rate way down also, and it's just a regular, what it, what it recommended for 1080. So, frame's missing. It's totally at, at perfect right now. So, anyway. All right, guys. I think we'll call it now. Let's see what the stats thing is on here. But, yeah, thanks. So. Decent. That's good. I might turn it back up a little bit if I have to, if you guys see the videos don't look too good when I do it next time. But I think I'm going to start doing this at least once a week. I'm just going to, you know, um, I'll like maybe basically edit some of the videos just to take out pieces and just stick them together like I did. So we just, and then we just watch them together and put them in that folder and kind of go through some reviews. So um, I had it ready Friday, but the stupid thing just didn't work. I think something was wrong with the internet around here, though. Because it just wouldn't work for nothing. If any of you guys were here, it was just junk. So but uh, so now we're like three, four days later, kind of. I'm not in the same mindset as I was when I got done with that long weekend. And also, not only was that a sucky job, and it was not only the third or fourth unit I had to get access to cut and sheet rock for the week, but I also was on finished on call to where the weekend before this I was on call. So I worked all the way through the weekend. I went to Tucson and worked on a high-rise uh, building down there. You know, with the drive down and drive back, it was like a full shift. So, we you need to upgrade from lighting. Oh, I have the lighting off on purpose. <laughs> I'm more, I'm more trying to show you guys what's on, on the screen. So, um, I don't know if I ever get anything set up and want to do a lot more, or do a lot more show and tell of electronics or something. You know, maybe I'll get some of this set up in a different area. Maybe I'll probably, maybe I'll get a couple webcams. You know, and just set one up that looks down, and maybe have a light with it, and just just have electronics there on the on the countertop or something. And, but I actually have uh, no lights on in this. This is this lighting on me, which I don't want to switch on me, but it's coming out too much. It's uh, from the screens, but I have dual 4K monitors right here, and they're just lighting me up. So anyway, all right. So uh, the Officer Tatum chant. Oh, that's what you're trying to tell me. Okay. I'll check that out in a minute when I get off of here. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if it's something cool. Or, I don't think I've heard of that one. I don't know if he's like, but I listen to just just to, to recant. I you know high impact flicks and you know I used to watch Infowars a lot years ago, but it kind of moved on to smaller people and stuff. But like I said, my daughter likes watching Amazing Lucas with me. We watch. Uh, she really likes Steve Terryberry, which is totally different stuff. It's just a dork who plays guitar. You know, a bunch of guitar channels like that. Him and uh, freaking. Uh, Darren, Jared Dines in, a, in that little circle, Davey 504. We haven't watched him for a couple weeks still, come to think of it. It's weird. It doesn't even recommend it anymore. That's strange. One of his channels even up. That guy had like a crap load of subscribers. Anyway, but for the for the new alternative news stuff, you know, um, I just watched a couple of these small channels, but I like to see little clips people put out. You know, Steven Crowder, you know, people like that. That uh, one guy, Tim Cass, Tim Poole or whatever, he used to be like a Democrat kind of like little lean left, he said. But like this dude shifting the other way because he said these dudes are totally psychotic. That social, socialist Democrats are just totally insane. So he, his, uh, his, his channel is pretty good watching lately. I, it gets recommended. I don't think I've subscribed. Maybe I did. I don't remember. But... Um, not bad listening. Sometimes it's just stuff that I put on and listen to while I'm working, and that's why 
paid for the premium because they blocked all the third-party apps that used to be able to play my videos in the background. And I know Brave Browser will do it. People, you know, been telling me about that. But it's just so streamless. It's worth the $11 a month that I can just hit the boop, any button and go open another app when YouTube is open. And it will just keep playing. Um, the audio, it'll just convert to audio only. Stupid wallpaper keeps changing this gate when I'm here. There we go. <laughs> my phone is looking at my phone. But anyway, yeah, Davey504, man, that guy is a lunatic. Lunatic. <laughs> but uh, so is Steve Terryberry. He's like the equal to a 504, but on guitar. The kid is, well, he's got to be in his 30s now, but he's been around since he was young uh, for quite a while in there. It's one of his funniest videos when he was younger was called How to Play, Learn to Play Guitar Like uh, Lil Wayne or something like that. Because Lil Wayne tried to play guitar on stage and he was really playing between two notes, just randomly picking, and everybody's cheering. Steve Terraberry is just insanely good. You could, he could just think of a phrase and just throw it right over something. You know, he's playing sweet picking and everything, and he's just so good. But he's obviously he probably doesn't have a girlfriend. If he does, he keeps her out of the thing, but he's just like, you know, lives with his mom still and everything, and he's just, that's all his life has been. And he even said himself he doesn't have the mentality or the mindset to play in a band or anything. Even though he's done little collaborations with some people, he's very shy. He just couldn't do a, you know, like tour or something. So, but he's really good. The do. If he's, I've seen a lot of collabs with a lot of these guys. You keep finding new names. So, that could, if that guy's good, he's been on there, probably seen him, but just don't follow him. But, uh, there's some pretty good shredders. I like how Matt Heafy from Trivium is like down to earth and just hangs out, does collabs with people on YouTube. Him and Jared Dines have done a couple. I haven't done them in a while, but them, they've done some together that are really cool. But uh, yeah. So, and uh, that's how I ruined my daughter, my oldest one. I took her to a Trivium concert for her first concert. Well, took her to like, like a Christian rock one, which was really little. But then when she's 13, I took her to Trivium. And, yeah, then she just all got into that stuff. And then she's met her husband, of course, now. He was in a band when he was a teenager. And they actually have music, a couple music videos on YouTube. I think they're called Reflectionless or something. <laughs> and uh, I wonder if any of their videos are still up. Let's see here. Let's go to this one. Uh, just before I go, reflection. Oh gosh. Oh, what the heck? Come on. No, I want to go to regular YouTube. Help me. Search across your channel. This is not the Chinese. Yeah, this is them. <laughs> Two years ago. Oh, so this band really—they kind of put it on rest now and. Um, her husband, you know, he's more trying to stick with, you know, working his way up at his, where he works, so that's cool, but this, uh, yeah, this is the, like, one of the guitarists is, one of the guitarists in this band is my daughter's husband. So, just to show you guys real quick, it's like, kind of, it's a little more of the screamo stuff I call it screamo emo. Oh, there he is. That's the the guy just a second ago is the son-in-law. So just to show you, that's what I did uh, to my daughter by taking her to a Trivium concert and into uh, Ozfest. And by the way, all the pixelating, that's actually in the original video too, so it's not just my stream. But he, I don't know, showed him briefly, briefly and there Harry was. Ah, he went by him. Anyway, yeah, that's the band that... Uh, <laughs> daughter, oldest daughter's bringing husband is in. They, yeah, they're not really doing much now, but I noticed that they, you know, they had a couple of videos. Um, out. I mean, it looks like somebody rec did record them. You know. I know there's some. There's more of them at in con playing at Joe's Grotto or whatever. I know I've seen it. 
Here's, here's Joe's Grotto. Like, they play live here. Oh, yeah, you can't hear the audio at all. That's, so that's not a good recording. But I know those people recorded them there. Who's that? I don't know who this is. That's one of the other guitarists, I think. But I just realized my daughter subscribes to this channel. She sees me putting that on there. She's in, hopefully she hasn't watched this far. She's going to be so mad. She's going to call me. She's just, like, really weird and shy and stuff. But I was trying to say is I ruined her by taking her to heavy metal concerts. And then, uh, then of course, that's what she's all got into and, you know, was all into dudes and bands and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, yeah. Strapping young lad. Josh just had to bring them up. Those that dude, Devin Townsend is a psychotic dude. But and then I used to just watch some of those videos. It was really complex, like the, the, the layering of the guitar the, and the drums. It's, but it's really tight, even though it's psychotic stuff that they're doing. Yeah, some of that song, that one album, I had love and all that stuff on there. It's crazy. And uh, but then I found his newer solo stuff, the Devin Townsend project. And it's like, it's like, more like shifting from strapping and lad more towards like a heavy metal version of David Gilmore. It's like the dude is insanely good. I remember watching his like his uh, some little like uh, demonstration video several years ago, and the dude was still had the, the the half balding long hair, looking like a freaking lunatic freak at the time. But it was like, watch him just effortlessly play these crazy tunings and do like, doing sweet picking and stuff. I'm like, dude. But yeah, Devin Townsend Project, you could just totally just jam that. It's like, it's very, it's intricate and stuff, but it's like, it's like, and it's tight, but it's not death metal stuff or whatever. It's, and that, in fact, if you just want to watch, just watch the uh, reaction videos of people, of vocal coach reactions to Devin Townsend, his newer stuff. And it's like, Wow, <laughs> he's like, this is a dude, this is just proves my point, and he'll admit it a little bit in that one demonstration, this is a guy that wasn't with girlfriends or nothing in high school, most of these guys weren't, that are this good, these are guys that were total nerds, they put everything, all their obsession into one thing, singing in front of the mirror, playing guitar or whatever, and then they got really good, Miss Sugar, dude, my night, my, well, she's 10 now, my daughter downstairs, you know, the one in the chair, we were watching the comedian, oh god, uh, Burr, Bill Burr, or whatever his name is, doing the Meshuggah clip. And you and he, the guy says he went to a Meshuggah concert. So and he said he was blown away because he's talking about the, how the, the drums play like one kind of beat, and then but the guitar and the bass is playing a different style. It's all together and it actually works. The dudes sound like lun the dudes look like lunatics and everything. I like didn't give them much of a th second thought when I first heard of Meshuggah. They just seem a little too satanic to me and everything. But when I see that that one clip, you know that one popular video, there's uh, what is it called? Uh, but it's that one video that the guy does in the comedy skit. He said, "My daughter just laughs every time I do that. I can't do it." But when you put, he goes, "Put it on, put it on." And we put on Bill Burr for sugar. And, he, and, and somebody animated that skit. That because I don't think he, I think he did it as a podcast. I don't think he did it on stage. Bill Burr. I think it was just from his podcast, which is audio only. And then somebody took it and put like clips of him on stage just for the still images, and then put pictures of the head of the lead guitar, lead singer of Meshuga, and then puts the drummer up when he's doing the poly type of beat or whatever he's talking about. <laughs> bleeds the song, dude. That song is insane, and uh, the, the dudes are weirdos. I mean, and it's weirdos that are always like this kind of like that kind of musicians. Most of the time, you have your exceptions, like. David Gilmore, who's probably always been a pretty normal dude, and they were just Titans. In the band, yes. I guarantee you those dudes probably, there's probably hardly anybody in that band that's ever went through phases of drug addiction and stuff. They were just serious musicians. In fact, I watched a Yes video of them yesterday from way back in the early 70s. I forget which song it was. Uh, All Good People. But it's like, you watch how many solos that guitarist is playing. He just doesn't have as much gain in in an uh, attack on his guitars with all the compression and everything. But that guy Steve Howe, and yes, back in the early seventies, is playing.
every bit as hard stuff, if not harder, than all the other music we were just talking about. Trivium, you know, uh, Devin Townsend, all that. That, Devin, uh, the, the, Steve Howe's not a lunatic, though. He's just really educated and good, and he plays all this professional-type music, you know, and, and styles, and then he got into rock, I think. But, but he's good. He's like, just, wow, you know. But most of the people, most of the people are lunatics. And that's why a lot of them, like the singers, they, they die out real fast. They just don't last, you know. It's Lane Staley from Ace, uh, Alice in Chains is gone, you know, young, you know, and just all these different ones, you know, they, they just go through drugs, you know. Uh, uh, you know, uh, freaking Guns N' Roses, <laughs> Axl Rose just didn't seem to have it anymore after, you know, a couple albums, you know, even though he tried and took 20 years to make another album, you know, and just some of the guys is just, you know. You ever try watching the... People like uh, Skid Row, Sebastian Bach do like a, a live show like within the last five, ten years. It doesn't sound anything like he did back in the day. So it's, I don't know how I got in the subject of metal and everything. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, I guess, but I don't know. So I do need to get going. I go downstairs. I think the wife had like company down there. So totally, you know, for a little bit. Anyway, with that, guys, we'll see what comes up of this week. See what I get for some show and tell later. See if I can maybe solder some circuits together if I get a chance. Just to see how the week goes. With that, I'll catch you guys all later.